Welcome to my store. And how long after the best before date? Like, say you were in a desperate pickle, the only thing you had, you bought the bag, you had it in the fridge, uh, it's uh, five days past best before. You're fine. Ten. You're still fine. Twenty. The nice thing about road prisons is when the water quality becomes so bad that they they just can't stand it anymore, they start producing males. The males then produce cysts, similar to brine shrimp. The little cysts sink to the bottom of the, the container, and their weight until the water quality becomes ideal again. So, so, so conceivably, if you had a bag for six months, will it take longer for the culture to it, start up it, again? It'll take longer to get the culture started because at this point you're hatching more for eggs, not having more for readily reproducing. Mm -hmm. But they will absolutely reproduce. Okay. Just add a little water, add a little bit of food, make sure your water chemistry is fine. You know, your pH is still within tank parameters, or you're looking at 8.1, 8.2. Um, your salinity in that 1.0 to 2.0 to 2.4 uh, range. And just let it sit. Um, so basically, time. if you had some clown fish eggs and something happened to them and you have to wait for the next batch, don't throw out your water for culture, your just keep it keep, and keep it uh, the start it up before uh, your eggs are going to hatch and you'll be fine. Absolutely. How long does it take to get the culture? Like, say you're doing that uh, roughly five gallon pill, like 40, yeah, yeah, 160 gallons worth of salt, but. Uh, Say you start that culture, you put the one bag in it, you add the green water, and you start it bubbling. About how long should it be until you've got a culture that you can consider is doing well? Three, four days, tops. Three, four days. And uh, how do you know when the culture is doing well? The the amount of food that you add in is consumed quicker and quicker. And ideally, how often should you add the uh, concentrated algae? Basically, you're looking for a mountain dew color. You always want a green tinge uh, to the water to make sure that there's always food in the water. As soon as there's no food, then the water is going to shock, start producing males and insists. You don't want that in an active culture. You want the female producing eggs, so you've got more water growing all the time. So as long as you can see a green hue to the water, you're absolutely fine. Um, you don't want to overfeed water first because it actually gums up the cilia on, on uh, the intake of the water first. Because the easy way to describe it is that it's like a, a street sweeper, and they got brushes on the front, and they basically all the little hairs and cilia. Those are the things you see whirling, when whirling you look around under a microscope. Yeah. Uh, and they're all they're doing is sort of funneling that food into their stomachs, so it can be processed. So if you put too much algae in, uh, you can actually gum up those hairs. It's not going to kill them, but it's going to sort of stunt their their growth and reproduction because you're, they're not able to process it as as efficiently as they would have otherwise. So like say you're in a room with five potatoes you get to eat, if you're in a room and they put ten tons of potatoes in you, you can't move, you can't, you can't eat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Mountain Dew-ish color, um, I think everybody's sort of familiar with what Mountain Dew looks like. And again, it's just a green, a slight green thing with the water uh, is more than adequate uh, to, to keep it better. Well, what I do is I generally put my hand a little bit under the water and that gives you an idea of the color because Sometimes when you've got the bucket and the uh, culture's been going, you've got a lot of color on the sides. Yep. That kind of distorts how clear the water is. So I just stick my hand a little bit under and then, okay, give me a better that, idea. Uh, I've, uh, I've got some customers that use shot glasses. They go to a shot glass, pull it up, pull it up with a light, and it gives okay, them a, yeah. a, a good sense. It's a nice clear vessel, um, small enough that they can actually, not only can they see how green the water is, but when you actually pull the, the shot glass up to a light, um, even light passing through, you can actually see a rough density of your water culture. Yeah, well. you can build a, bit of, yeah, a little bit of microscope at the top. Exactly. Magnify. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. So, rotifers, for, for those who don't know, uh, look like floating dust. That's the easiest way to, to describe yeah, them. Yeah, just little tiny it, dots. It looks like little tiny dots, it looks like floating dust. Uh, as long as when you're taking your culture and you're holding it there, it looks like dust, not chunks. You're fine. If it's chunks, it means you've got settling happening or too much detritus at the bottom of your uh, your, your, your culture vessel. Um, so going back to sort of the two things we need: food and water quality. So the more water you need, obviously, the more uh, food that you have to feed them in order to to maintain a, a specific population. The problem comes: the higher the population that you have, the quicker the water quality becomes an issue. Rotifers are pretty robust. Um, the, they will tolerate a fair amount of ammonia, um, not to great extents, but they they will actually tolerate ridiculous amounts of nitrates. 
um, which is great because it's sort of a set and forget type of a, a, a launcher. The easiest way to do it is when you're harvesting, harvest your rotor first, put them in your tank, add new salt water or add your coffee strained tank water back in. So that way you've got a constant uh, refresh of the, of the water. Um, if you're worried about adding you know, the heavy nitrates or ammonia into your main tank, um, do obviously do that with caution. Um, if you're adding large amounts of the small tanks, you're going to uh, put your water chemistry out of whack. For those of you who have clams, however, the clams actually enjoy the. Oh, yeah, the, they'll the eat nitrates. If they can't get nitrates, they'll take nitrates or yeah. ammonia. So if you've got clams, rotor for water is actually a good food source for them. Yeah. The, uh, if you're not comfortable going straight from the culture into your, uh, into your tank, then we do offer the strainers. Um, and, and again, we just we, we do recommend that you strain it. So the strainers here are, are, are easy. It's a 53 micron uh, screening. It is removable, so you can easily wash it or replace it if need be. And we do sell the replacements. And it's quite simple in order to strain. Basically, you're just going to take the contents of your bag and or culture. And all you're going to do is just pour out And as you'll see, it's small enough that it actually holds the water tension. I'm actually sort of running my yeah. finger across the bottom in order to break the surface tension in order to get that water to flow through. That's what I tell people to the, do. Too. The other option is with a little bit of a, of a height, you can actually sort of force the water through. So I'm going to stop there. And I'm just going to show you so you can get a close up on the camera here. So. I'm just trying to get most of the water out. Let's see if we can well, as you sort of what looks like dirt particles yeah, along there. on the the screen. Those are your rotifers. Okay. So once you've got the the rotifers strained out, you've got them in this form, you can literally take this, put that in your tank, and sort of just move it around in your tank to feed your tank. Okay, so you're raising baby clownfish and you've got 30 babies. Sure. Roughly, what amount on that uh, strainer would be the appropriate amount to pull the action? We, we've actually worked with a couple of clam fresh breeders and we've sort of determined a, a thousand rotifers per clam fish fry seems to be the, the gravy amount for what they need nutritional wise over the course of the day. Okay. Um, each one of our bags, you're looking at a minimum of 200,000 rotifers per bag. Um, and that's a package, so if you're getting it at the end of the, the two week shelf life, you can easily double that. Generally speaking, if you can see it on the screen, you've got more than enough to feed your fry. Um, obviously, the browner it is, or the more you have, um, you're actually just putting more food into the, into the water from a fry perspective. And then it comes back to your just culture being.